Today's episode is sponsored by Mahler Bros Golf. You want to look good on the golf course, but it often comes at the expense of feeling good. Mahler Bros Golf has polos that look good and feel good. With their lightweight and stretchy material that hugs your body, you will feel cool while looking just as cool. Their polos are guaranteed to make you look better, but it's up to you to golf better. On a summer hot day on the golf course, there's no polo you'd rather wear than Mahler Bros Signature Polos. Mahler Bros Golf has a large catalog of polos with designs for those who want a loud design and others for just want something subtle and sleek. They also have fun t-shirts, hats, tumblers, and so much more to make your golfing experience better. Use code BELLYUP at MahlerBros.com for 15% off. And into our show. The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Here comes pressure, throws it to Eckler on the screen. He's got a block to the 10, to the 5, into the end zone. for a first down Herbert with time now running out of time throws on the run down the sideline caught in the end zone <laughs> Keenan Allen for the touchdowns throws and again it's intercepted and that's Asante Samuel here's another oh, watch out how did it feel when Derwin James absolutely power bomb the f- out of here <laughs> on national television you're listening to the Shock Therapy Podcast with Tyler Lawrence and Zach Alfers. And we're back, Zach. How you been, man? Uh, I'm good. It's been weird weather over here in Sacramento. Just rainy. T- today was like monsooning and hailing when I was driving back from work. Um, and here in California, it's as soon as the rain starts, people... No, no one in California can drive very well anyway, but as soon as the rain starts... Oh my goodness! Watch out. Um, besides that, I'm trying. I'm happy. I'm inside. I got the heater uh, pumping. My my feet are warm, so I, I'm glad I'm I'm out of the the crazy weather that's been going on uh, this last couple these last couple of days. Yeah, I just got back from Austin. I went and visited my dad down there. They got some crazy weather, bro. Sorry about me being super white. I'll end up fixing <laughs> this during the pod at some point in time. It's lit. But, uh, <laughs> it's super white. Jesus can't even see my nose. I look like uh, Voldemort or something. (laughs) But uh, yeah, I went to Austin. I got to walk around downtown Austin a little bit. Had a cool little weekend. I actually met up with my old position coach who uh, moved out to Hutto, Texas. He's the strength and conditioning coach for their uh, high school football program. But it was kind of a cool getaway. Uh, Got some of those crazy Texas thunderstorms that are always kind of exciting and crazy and all that. Lots going on in the football world. Uh, let's just go ahead and start about Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, contract extension, restructure, I should say. Um, I'll let you go ahead and talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I was super excited about that. And I, I, I'm pretty sure on the 8th, uh, on, on March 8th of last year, I'm pretty sure is when the, the Mike Williams extension um, happened. So it seems like this time of the year is – uh, a, a busy time for the Chargers front office, and this year um, was was no exception. And really happy that they got these deals done because, to me, they're coming into this year, Allen was expected to have a, a twenty two million dollar hit to the cap, um, which really would uh, have left as is. Um, I don't think we would have been able to operate uh, or or manage a very competitive roster. So um, glad that we restructured that um and because of of such the the big hit that that was coming people were talking about it it's time to move on from keenan allen uh they could save uh, almost 15 million dollars if they just cut them um but that's not what you want to do if you're a team like the chargers who are building who are so close to to competing at the highest level Uh, so they went and restructured his deal um 
are ending up going to save, let's see, what is the savings on it? $8.9 million Ooh. off of this restructure. That's pretty solid. On top of that, they weren't done there. Restructured Mike Williams um, for another five and a half million. And so that, that's what you want to do. You, you don't want to get worse uh, on, on a position that is so crucial. I know those guys were banged up, um, but but they're they're better on this team um, than than off the team. And, and so I'm glad we got those deals restructured. Hopefully they can get healthy. Uh, Keenan is coming off his his worst season since 2016 when he was dealing with just injury after injury. So hopefully those guys can get right. Uh, really excited that the, the, the cap issue for the chargers is slowly, slowly dealing. Hopefully, you know, we still have some, some big other restructures in the making possibly with the Mac Bosa and Corey Lindsley, all with big, uh, um, cap hits potentially uh, if they can restructure any of those deals uh, we'll be in a much better position than we were yesterday so glad that happened and glad uh keenan is going to be done in the powder blue at, at least for next season i just think it's crazy uh those two players were like the two players i thought were least likely to get an extension or um, a restructure because now they're capped next season Oh man, it's combined like $65 million, $66 million. So, I mean, they're each of them has a cap hit over 32 million next year. That's rough. But what go do ahead, we do ahead. about that? That is that's quarterback money. That's like a Derek Carr <laughs> money, which is astronomical for two wide receivers. Um, but makes me a little bit worried about what happens next year. I'm assuming there's going to be an extension. I thought Keenan Allen would have been a prime candidate to get an extension, not a restructure, because that money is um, – you, you, we have to find a way to navigate through that. And I thought it made a lot more sense to, to restructure. Um, J.C. Jackson, I know over his first season, didn't look really good for the Chargers, but you can spread $8 million across the next four years – and that's just $2 million each year. Like, it's it's a minimal hit. Both Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, both free agents. Next, Both of them are under contract for another season. Sorry. Uh, and so you're just putting all of it in that last year of their contract. And if you cut them, both of them have are going to have, like, $12 million in dead cap. So I just – I don't know what we do in that situation. It just seemed really bad financially – uh, bad financial decision because we're essentially taking a loan from next year. Yeah, and, and you mentioned the, the cap hit for next year, which is why I, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to see some, some more restructures happening here because you mentioned that the major cap hit from the two receivers, Bosa and and Mac are supposed to combine for about $77 million towards next year's cap. So you, you got to imagine that one of those, if not both of those deals gets restructured um, because otherwise we are, are shooting ourselves in the foot before 2024 even gets going. Um, so yeah, that, Tom Telesco has his work cut out for him. Um, this is a, a, a tricky situation. Uh, fans have been begging for this team to go all in for a while now. And last year, last off season, they did. We got a bunch of players that didn't pan out because of injuries and whatnot, but th this is, what you deal with when you dish out these giant contracts that we did, we gave out last year. Um, this is kind of, this is what good teams who are, are, are good, who, who build strong rosters. This is what they deal with in uh, on a year on an annual basis. So if we want to compete with the likes of the chiefs, um, this is something that we're going to have to get used to. Um, so interested to see, see what, how they decide to get out of this because it is, it is definitely a puzzle. Yeah, I'm just looking at next season for uh, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. I mean, I guess what we could do is uh, have those void years where uh, the player is not on the team and his cap goes into a year after, um, which is a possibility, but it just doesn't – I don't know, man. It makes me worried about the future because you've got this year – I mean, Joey Bosa's $31 million against the cap. Khalil Mack, 27. That's two players that are taking up, what, 25% of our total cap? That's an insane amount for two players, even, you know, them being superstars like that. 
Um, JC Jackson makes a lot of sense because you can eat some of that cap hit. Corey Lindsley makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm still expecting Matt Filer to get cut. It's not yeah, a whole lot of happen. space and a whole lot of room for much of anything. No, I'm not envious uh, of those guys, and um, something else, something has to happen. You, you can't. Something else has to happen. So I, I'm just patiently waiting for, for those moves because uh, we de we desperately need some some roster shuffling. Uh, I don't know if you heard this or not. Kind of moving on to our next subject. Uh, Philip Rivers tried to come out of retirement last year to play for the. 49ers and the Dolphins. You hear about that? I saw some some rumblings. Just um, didn't get a chance to to read too much into it, but just saw the headlines. Um, what what? You break it down for me. What what's going on there? Yeah. So I guess like at the end of the season, with you know Tua Tagovailoa injured, with the Dolphins kind of being on the cusp of the playoffs right there, uh, with the 49ers having their issues at quarterback situation toward the end of the year. Yeah. Um, I guess somebody made a call one way or the other. I'm not sure if it was Philip Rivers calling in, in kind of inquiring about, you know, availability there or the opposite direction. But there was potential that he was going to come out last year as kind of a, uh, a last hurrah, right? Kind of what Eric Weddle did getting trying to get a ring there, but just didn't come to fruition. Uh, kind of interesting. I know people are talking about now, oh, Philip Rivers is – back in free agency is going to be a target. I don't necessarily think so. It was kind of like a, Hey, you know, I'm not doing anything. My high school football season is ended, um, ended, you know, two months ago. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody need a, a, an aging arm? Well, yeah. Um, sometimes you just, those guys don't know when to quit. Um, and I, I a, a competitor like, like Phil, um, you, you know, that, that, that fire is burning for him for him still so I, i'm still waiting for the day we just give him the one day contract and allow him to retire a charger um that, that just se seems right it seems it needs to happen that guy gave us both of his acls and his heart and soul and blood sweat and tears so um would love to see the the organization uh just reciprocate a, a little bit and i think that's the smallest um gesture they could do but what would go a long way um, for preserving that that relationship moving forward. Uh, yeah, I would mean I would love to get a couple more Philip Rivers uh, um, mic'd up would be great. Yeah, because he was always the best at that. Yeah, uh, the coach. I don't know. I I do want to see like when is he going to retire with the, the Chargers? Like when is that going to become official? It was supposed to happen last year, never happened. Used that was supposed to happen the year before that, didn't happen, and. You know, I'm just ready to like I I miss Philip Rivers talking to the media. Like I don't get yeah. it anymore. <laughs> so it'd be nice. Uh, kind of the last thing I want to talk about uh, before we get into the the reason for this episode, which is uh, breaking down wide receivers in the upcoming NFL draft. Uh, there was a NFL PA team report cards thing that came out. Uh, the Chargers right now rank pretty lowly right across the board. Uh, they ranked 30th among all 32 NFL teams. A big reason for that is their Chargers are kind of in limbo right now. They don't really have a legit practice facility. It's scheduled to come out in 2024. So in the meantime, the team's been working out of a converted office building, essentially, uh, with a pretty bare bones training room, cafeteria, locker room. A lot of people were talking about, oh, the Chargers got a $5 billion stadium. The locker room has nothing to do with the stadium. They see that stadium nine times a total year. Like when they're talking about locker room, they're talking about at the practice facility. Um, they got some gross hot tubs, I guess. Uh, one of two teams, the no sauna or steam room. Uh, Chargers actually fired their head trainer as a result of this report. So they were ranked dead last in training room category. So all of that should really change once that new facility in El Segundo is built out. Um, kind of interesting to, to hear about some really good teams ranking pretty badly. Uh, Chiefs ranked uh, one spot ahead of the Chargers, and you know they've got multiple Super Bowls now. So yeah, 
that that was a really interesting report. Um, and I, I think I wasn't super surprised with, with, with the Chargers rankings, but there were teams like the Chiefs where you, you, it doesn't make sense for how much success they have, um, which I guess kind of just shows you it, it doesn't always the, – the more money you put into it, um, you're, you're not always going to get, you know, the, the best environment. So it's very, very interesting to see that report come out. And um, I, as far as I know, that's like the first type of report that the – of of that type of, of caliber so excited to well interested to see kind of how those play out moving forward um especially i'm next interested season. to see how it affects free agency sure how many teams read this report and go oh don't want it yeah. at least a year away from having nice facilities right That's and it doesn't a, yeah. seem to ever go like you never hear about um uh, a player talking bad about the team facilities especially because a lot of them have no idea unless they go to a different team, they just think that that's, you know, normal. like as a rookie coming from your, your college and going into an NFL facility, you just think every NFL facility is kind of the same. And you don't really get that transfer of knowledge until you've moved around different teams. No, that, that is interesting to think of. Um, Cause yeah, as a college guy, a rookie coming from college, you don't know any better. That's the only Instance that you maybe get if to you're see in like NFL Alabama or like Florida, I was thinking Oregon's like big... supposed to have some state of the heart facilities. But if you're going to SMU, right, and you go to an NFL sure. Appalachian State, the FCS yeah. schools, yeah, uh, it 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 should start to influence guys' destinations, and it, at the very least, kind of if, if you got two offers on the table, I. I and you kind of can't put one over the other. Um, I'm going straight to that report if I'm a player, just to kind of see where, you know, the amenities kind of stack up against each other. Yeah, I just thought it was really interesting. I'm really excited to see how that changes year over year. You see a team kind of go from the bottom up to the top. So I just think overall it was like a really uh, interesting article to just see um, how players are – viewing these teams facilities and how that could affect free agency uh, how that could affect people's jobs right so mm -hmm. a lot of get into the nfl draft me and you ended up picking five players uh, that we kind of scouted and got a lot of information from and try to give um some feedback on what we think about these players i'll let you go ahead and start first uh who's the first wide receiver that you decided to uh break down Hey, Zach, I'm going to stop you real quick because you're breaking up quite a bit right now. I'll let you get yourself situated. So I'm going to talk about Zach Flowers, uh, Boston College uh, Eagles wide receiver. Uh, Zay Flowers was a three-star recruit from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He's 13 siblings, and he's being the, the fourth youngest in the family. Uh, he's always been playing football since the age of four and has a love for the game that really drives him. Uh, as a freshman at Boston College, Flowers managed to make his way onto the field, uh, displaying his toughness and competitiveness. Uh, Flowers has continued to improve his productivity and his impact over at Boston College. Uh, he posted career highs last year in receptions, yards, touchdowns, and yards after the catch. Uh, he offers both inside and outside versatility. I have him listed more of as a slot wide receiver just because he's a smaller so he's, you know, 5'9", 182 pounds. Uh, he's quick, though, 4'4", four, four, uh, 2, 40-yard dash, 10-yard um, split, ranked really, really high. He had a really decent overall combine. Uh, showed he was really explosive, 10-foot uh, uh, broad jump, and had a 35.5-inch vertical leap. So he's able to, to get up and after it. Um, the issue is going to be the lack of height and – the lack of weight, which presents challenges in projecting a success at the next level. Some teams may view him as a slot only wide receiver because of those size limitations, but he's definitely shown the ability to, to do more. Uh, his inconsistency in catching passes is also kind of a concern. So Flowers has been charged with 24 drops over his entire career at Boston College with an 11% drop rate. That's not yes. good. Uh, the good thing is that as a run after the catch threat, I mean, this guy's got wings on his feet like he moves he's really fast 
It faces a high amount of uh, coverage and off coverage and free releases, leaving room for improvement in his release packages. Um, despite the challenges he might face, Flowers' overall skill set and versatility makes him a really, really enticing option for NFL teams. Uh, he can be that really, really electric player in space, thinking like kind of like Demo Samuel, just a little bit smaller. Uh, he's a three-level receiving threat. He can beat you deep. He can beat you in the intermediate part of the field on some dig routes. Uh, and then he can take those little little bubble options uh, and, and take them to the house. So uh, PFF has Flowers training toward being picked in the 20s somewhere. I've seen him as high as, you know, 20 and as low as about 30. Uh, highly unlikely he falls into the second round, but uh, he's just a really dynamic and fun player to watch on film. It looks like I got you back, so. I'm back? All right. Well, what I was trying to say, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Quentin Johnson, the big wide receiver out of uh, TCU, um, a, a big part of that offense and, and kind of a, a, a big reason for TCU is so so talented this season. Um, and I think Quentin Johnson kind of stands out in, in this year's draft class just because there's a lot of guys – uh, with the ability to play inside um, in the slot uh, as a Z receiver. There's not a whole lot of guys with the prototypical size um, with true X potential. Um, and, and I think Quentin Johnson is all of those things. I think he will eventually become a number one receiving threat in the NFL because uh, I think he's that talented. And then he has the size. He's 6'3", 210 pounds. Um, didn't, didn't show up at the combine, but it supposedly runs in the low four fours. Um, he checks all the boxes that, that you are looking for when you're evaluating a wide out coming out of college, entering into the NFL. I, I mentioned the size that's there. tremendous catch radius. Just throw it around them. This guy's going to get the ball. He has big, long arms, uh, amazing leaping ability. The guy would be a solid uh, NBA point guard. Um, if he, he decided to, to play basketball, uh, really, really can sky up there and, and, and snatch the balls uh, out of the air. And he makes tough, contested catches look routine. He's just so smooth. Um, yeah. Can out, out muscle guys at the catch point, can jump over smaller defenders um, and just fluid with plucking the ball out of the air. Um, and I'm telling you, he makes sports center plays uh, routinely and he just makes them look easy. Um, that, that speed I mentioned, I, I, I can't wait for his pro day, uh, to see what he actually clocks in at, but that I, it, he looks like he runs a four, four on the field with his pads. Um, so you, you see that speed translate from the, the practice field to game day, um, great straight line speed. And he combines that with a like very good, precise, short area burst, uh, great start and stop ability. Um, and that really adds to his ability to, to run routes effectively and manipulate defenders. Um, after the catch, the guy has a, a quick switch, gets up field almost instantly, um, and, and, and can make people miss. Uh, on his career, he had 7.7 .7 yards after the catch, um, and that's on and 43 broken tackles. This guy's hard to get down. That's on 108 total receptions on his career. Um, no other prospect, in, in my opinion, is, is as well-rounded. Everyone else has some type of, not, I'm not going to say issue, but he, he checks all Draw the boxes. Back. Yeah, there's something that is, that's going to cause you to hesitate a little bit. Not with Johnston. This is one that if he's on the board and you need a receiver, you need an X receiver, just put that pick in and let him uh, take care of the rest. Because I, I think he's a really ex exciting player. He's an insane athlete. Um, he did, he didn't run the 40, but he did jump. He, he did jump 40 and a half inch vertical, the third highest out of the position, uh, broad jump over 11 feet. Um, and a, apparently has some unofficial 40 times in the four, three range. So can't wait for his pro day. He also squats 575 pounds. The, the guy is an animal. Um, he has the side. He reminds me of DeAndre Hopkins, man. Like, he, that's really a very similar comparison just looking at his play style. Like, D-Hop yeah. is, like, that guy. No, absolutely. I, I see that comparison. Um, I think the big the big, the, the big, big drawback, if, you're, if you are going to put um, some type of concern on Johnston, 
is that the fact that he had eight drops last year alone. That that's a whole lot. Um, definitely has to work on his concentration. Uh, also have seen him dance a little too much and, and hand fight a little too much when facing press coverage. That's something that a guy like that with his potential, he's going to see a lot of that at the next level. He's going to have to figure that out. Um, but not too much, not too worried about that because of everything else he brings. Um, whoever drafts this guy is going to get a hell of a receiver because he, 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 he is really amazing. And I'm excited to see his career at the next, at the next stage. Speaking of comparisons, um, somebody that a lot of people have been comparing to Keenan Allen, Jackson Smith and Jigba, wide receivers, Ohio he's, State. Like uh, he's <laughs> he's an exciting player because if you take into account uh, his time at Ohio State playing with Garrett Wilson, playing with um, the the cat that was drafted by the Saints, um, uh, no, two first-round draft picks, basically. And Jackson Smith and Jigba had the better season out of the both of them uh, in their their his sophomore season, their junior season. Uh, he made himself a, a name for himself in high school as a five star recruit. Continued to impress uh, for the Ohio St- State Buckeyes in 2021. He set a Big Ten receiving record with 1,600 yards uh, receiving. However, his success in college was hindered by injuries, limited in just three games last year. He had uh, four passes caught all of 2022. So he was basically out due to a hamstring injury all of last year. Um, But he's proven himself to be an outstanding route runner and separator. He's got really, really good spatial awareness. And his ability to just work in the scramble situations and and find a a way to get open for his quarterback has been astronomical. Uh, One of his greatest strengths, like I said, is his route running ability possesses really deceptive footwork. Uh, he's got great body control. Uh, he's able to read leverage of the defense defenders, uh, and he makes side adjustments to run into those open spaces. Uh, he's got exceptional hands and ball skills. He's really reliable target for his quarterback. Uh, he's also decisive after the catch, and he's got excellent field vision. His technical refinement, just smooth play style, all of that is really similar to Keenan Allen. And he's also got the release package to, to get off of press and and uh, get into his route really quickly. He gains leverage and he just gets open. Uh, his lack of explosiveness was kind of thought to be a concern. He isn't likely to, to win a lot of foot races. He didn't even decide to run the 40 at all. Um, and he relies really heavily on his technique over his uh, stop and go ability and his just straight line speed. Um, he moved all around the offense for Ohio State. He Jackson Smith and Jigma was put in a motion quite a bit. He was given some jet sweeps, uh, but he primarily functioned out of the slot. He enjoyed a lot of free releases from there, and he's got some ability to play outside, but it's really in question because he didn't do it a lot. He was more of the motion man, uh, more of the guy that you're going to for the slants, um, a lot over the middle, and, and really did not run deep a whole lot. Uh, His college production also, as great as that 1,600-yard season was, it was kind of a one-hit wonder. So that kind of raised questions about his readiness for the NFL. He's a really talented right receiver. He's going to be drafted in the first round. If I had to guess, it's going to be in the first 15 to 20 picks just because of that really explosive route-running ability. He's got excellent hands, that field vision. Um, The other thing I kind of want to point out, he he hasn't shown to be really explosive, but his RAS scores really tell a different story. So uh, he had a 3.93 shuttle. That's a green uh, three cone drill, 9.87. So he's really ranking at uh, the top five or so uh, guys in this draft class in just terms of his stop and go ability and his broad jump was really high as well. But that needs to translate to the field. RAS scores tells us that that ability is there, uh, but you know, I'm really interested to see what his foot speed is. If I had to guess, it's probably going to be in the four fives. Uh, you look back at Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen ran in the four sixes with a bum knee. And if Njigba doesn't have that long speed, that is kind of concerning. So I really like him as a player. I think he's worth, um, you know, a, a top 15 pick. If he's there for the Chargers, I could see them going after him. I think the similarities are really I, I want the burners, ideally what I want. But if you're not going to be able to get the burner, 
this guy is going to be a really productive and good football player for you. All right. Um, we're talking about burners. That's a good segue into my next guy. Uh, I'm talking about the 6'10", 185-pound receiver out of Tennessee, and that's Jalen Hyatt. Um, bit of a late bloomer. Uh, his first two seasons only totaled 41 receptions for 500 yards and, and four touchdowns, but absolutely exploded uh, last season. 67 catches, 1,200 yards, 15 touchdowns, the second in, in all of uh, college football last year. Um, and is emerged and submitted himself as the best vertical threat that we have in this class. Because of those efforts, was named the Belitnikov Award winner, given to the best receiver in the nation. Um, and there's a lot of fans out there, Charger fans in particular, who, who want this guy. And I like the fit. Um, he takes most of his snaps from the slot. 87% of, of his snaps did come um, from the slot area. But what does he bring? He brings speed. The dude is fast, uh, four four one in the forty, um, and he uses that to instantly eat up cushion. And he forces DBs to prematurely turn their hips because you have to uh, trust that this guy's going to go deep because he he just burns people routinely. Um, playing in the SEC, he saw some very talented secondaries, and Hyatt just had his way with them um, in college was almost unstoppable uh, unless they brought double team and extra um, attention to him. And even when, even then um, still had plenty of chances to make plays uh, very long arms uh, longer than, you know, his frame would suggest. Um, and I think that allows him to play bigger and taller uh, than just at just six foot um, that speed and explosion. That is Jalen Hyatt kind of in a nutshell. Um, you know, analysts are comparing him to last year's Jamison Williams, who I think a lot of Charger fans last year really wanted JMO. Um, so I think um, I, I see I think Hyatt would be a tremendous fit for what we have going on right now. The big arm of Justin Herbert, um, I just think would complement the the other guys we have in the receiving room so well. Uh, what people kind of worry about him is how he's going to handle an NFL route tree. Uh, I think that's coachable. I, I think you, you, you can work around that. Um, because of the offense he ran, he was always about two to three yards off the ball. So uh, didn't see any type of press coverage. Um, so that's a concern. How is he going to handle physical DBs in his face? Um, and then there's just the talk about he might just be a one-and-done guy. He just has one year of dominant uh, collegiate play. Um, but so people want to doubt that that he's going to be able to to re repeat that success at the highest level. Um, I think all of that is workable. That's all coachable. Um, when you're evaluating prospects, you kind of have to go off the intangibles, what what it is that you can't coach. And that's speed and explosion. Speed and explosion will always be uh, valued in the NFL, especially in today's game. Um, so so he'll be gone by the first round. Um, hopefully he's there when the chargers come up at 21. Uh, I, I think, I think he would be a tremendous fit. Um, what else did I write down there? He was being talked about as like a second round pick, but after his combine, like there is a high chance he's going in the first round. I really, really like everything you said about him. And I've liked everything I've seen about him because he's, he's weird. He's kind of a, a weird kind of unicorn. He's six foot. Also 176 pounds, so he's tall. He's really light. He's got the 4'4 speed you talked about. He's also got long arms, 40-inch vert. I mean, this guy really vert. improved his stock quite a bit. The the 11 foot three inch broad jump, the the Crazy. longest broad Insane. jump. No, so the, the dude explodes. Um, he has rockets in his feet. Um, whoever whoever drafts this guy is going to get a home run threat. Um, and I, I think it would just make so way too much sense for, for the chargers, uh, if he is available and the top edge guys aren't there. Yeah. I mean, he's one of the fastest guys out of this class and his skill is just getting behind guys, just outrunning them track me type of speed. I really like Jalen Hyland a, a lot. Uh, I'm going to bring it over onto, uh, kind of a Z wide receiver. In my opinion, one of my favorite, like probably, I, I think this guy is my favorite wide receiver in this entire draft. 
It's Jordan Addison out of USC. Um, he was originally a four-year star re recruit from Maryland, uh, was a highly sought after prospect by some of the top schools. Notre Dame was after him, North Carolina, Maryland, Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh ended up getting him. Uh, he was also a, a multi-position player. He played quarterback. He played defensive back. He played wide. Uh, he had some pretty impressive highlights, earned all area honors, but he was kind of a smaller guy, ran in the four, four fives as a freshman, uh, sorry, as a high school senior for the 40 yard dash, uh, leading to his that kind of four star recruit rating. Uh, he was the 10th overall athlete in the country. Uh, he ultimately chose Pittsburgh where he went and played with Kenny Pickett uh, in 2021. He won the Fred Belitnikoff Award last season as the nation's top wide receiver. Consensus All-American recognition. Uh, despite his smaller size, he's got really impressive play strength. Uh, maybe not the length you'd expect, but, I mean, he plays a lot bigger than his size. He's able to, to come down a lot of contested catches, uh, even when hit, big hits are imminent. Uh, he's a really versatile player, serves as a run blocker. He's a punt returner. He's a kick returner. He can line up at, in, in the backfield as a, a rusher. Um, and then he can even line up outside or in the slot. So he's really a guy that you move around all around the formation. Uh, he's got pretty decent speed, both downfield and in short area quickness. Allows him to get step on defenders. He's really explosive with the ball in his hands. Uh, and he demonstrates really, really good concentration, body control. He's able to go and get the ball at the high point. Uh, he's just really dynamic, and he's got a lot of ability to create separation. He's really savvy as a route runner. Uh, makes him really reliable, a high-volume target with the impact to just be on any team and just help them out in any way possible. Um, he's a really, really big threat in the quick game, in the screen game. Uh, he uses his hands to pluck balls out of the air and transition to a run-after-catch opportunities really quickly. Um his run after the catch ability is just like a really strong component of his game. And he's really twitchy uh, playing. His playing style is really, really fun to watch. Uh, he's got really good spatial awareness. He's got great body control. There's a lot of selling points for this guy, especially since he's only 21 years old. So he's one of the youngest, most explosive, explosive players to come out uh, in this draft class. Um, he didn't face press very often. He's got ability to find holes in zone coverage, and his understanding of coverage is making him a really valuable asset. Um, although he's got that really impressive athleticism, the speed, there's still areas where I think he can improve. Um, he doesn't really do a whole lot of deception in his route running, and his lack of it will be a um, his lack of it to be effective at the professional level. So he needs to avoid raising his pad level before breaks to giving away his intentions to defensive backs. He also needs to improve his shoulder head fix and Stevie's in the NFL. They're not going to fall for him. Uh, Addison's size will be a limiting factor, so he's not the biggest guy. He's got to learn to stay low, punch inside the chest, and reduce his impact. Uh, while he's done well in the slot position, he needs to enhance his ability to win outside the numbers. Additionally, he needs to work on his hands as he's dropped some passes, uh, 10 passes over the last two years, just simply taking his eyes off the ball. Uh, not seeing the ball in before he's turning into a runner. Um, but he's got really great concentration. He's got really good ability at the catch point. Um, the weaknesses may hinder him a little bit, but he's going to be an explosive, fun player. He's the the player I expect to come off the board first. Um, Speed-wise, his long straight speed, his quick area speed, he didn't test all that well at the combine. So 4.49 is... Uh, that borderline, I'm fast, but I'm not going to, like, um, take off on you. Uh, I think it's more of his just lateral agility, spatial awareness, and he's got enough speed to be a threat there. Uh, only a 34-inch vert, so he's he's not going up and, and really getting it at that position. 5'11 and um, – what is that? 5'11, 11, 11. So he's almost, almost six, six foot. foot. Yeah, almost six foot. Um 171 pounds. He's a light player, but overall, I, I really like Jordan Addison, probably my favorite wide receiver in this class because I think he's got a blend of everything that the Chargers need. That would be it. Oh, I'm out of breath. <laughs> that would be a good play. Um, also, the the kid gets to stay in sunny Southern California, which I think is a plus to to any 
um, hopeful prospect. But I'm going to talk about Josh Downs out of North Carolina, a uh, little smaller than the guys that I was talking about, 5'10", 180 pounds. Um, but the first word you got to talk about when you're looking at Josh Downs is, is productive. The dude just can produce. Um, came out of high school with two back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons and buried a little bit on the, the, the depth chart in 2020 uh, when he walked on for the Tar – or when he started his career um, with the Tar Heels as a freshman. Only appeared in four games, only had seven catches for 119 yards, but half of those catches were for touchdowns. He had three touchdowns out of those seven catches. Um, 2021 was really his, his show-out year. 101 catches for over 1,300 yards and eight touchdowns. And then last year, 94 catches, another 1,000-yard receiving year, um, and then a career high with 11 touchdowns. So the guy is productive. There's no way around it. Um, And he's absolutely a a dynamic athlete. Um, I was surprised to see him clocked at at just a 4.48 in the 40-yard dash Um, because you look at the tape, man, he seems a lot quicker than that. and so, and and I think the reason is because he is so quick in those first ten yards. Uh, second fastest ten yard split in the entire uh, uh, position group, one point four nine. Um, that's tied with Tank Dell and is just a millisecond faster than uh, Jalen Hyatt. Also had the thirty eight and a half inch vertical, so also brings that explosiveness that you're looking for. Just an absolutely crafty, violent sudden route runner um keeps his hips very low and just explodes in and out of those breaks um absolutely a manipulator of the defense can get his guy going the wrong way with just quick elusive moves knows how to use his head uh, body positioning just to get guys just turned in, in circles um very effective in, in the contested catch situation that's always something that you're going to look for uh when when evaluating a a collegiate prospect um, and despite not being the a giant, only 5'10", catches more than 72% of contested catch targets. That's phenomenal production. Um, you can't get much better than that. Uh, and quarterbacks want to throw him the ball. They're going to improve their ratings. They're going to improve their stats. Um, Sam Howell might as well have been drafted because of this guy. 43 Almost 44% of Sam Howell's production in, in 2021 went uh, Downs' way. So uh, just tells you how important he was to that Tar Heel offense. Um, just a very special playmaker. The, the People asking for a run-after-the-catch specialist, you don't look no further than Downs. This guy can make plays out of nothing. Um, a guy that give him a screen uh, 50, 60 yards down the field, and, and he might house that thing. Uh, gets up field very quickly, has the foot speed, the sudden quickness, um, does a very good job uh, avoiding the big hits and eluding would-be tackles. Um, can just in and out, change his direction very, very fast. In 2020, or last season, 2022, 375 yards came after the catch. Nearly 40% of this dude's production came with the ball in his hand, so... Now, the, the knock, um, people are going to look at his weight, going to talk about the longevity um, at the next level. Uh, he might just be a, a one big hit away from, from never playing again. Um, they, they, they knock on his play strength. Uh, he is not a great blocker. Um, they, they talk about that he won't be able to break tackles effectively like he did at UNC. Um, I'm not buying any of that. I think he's an absolute great athlete a guy that you can hand the ball off to, a guy who can take screens to the house. Um, I think he's going to get drafted in the second round based on his athleticism alone um, and his ability to manipulate DBs and just make them look dumb. Yeah, I think he's a fun player. I like him a lot. I'm going to talk about Nathaniel Tank Dell. Uh, Houston uh, comes out of mainland high school at Daytona Beach, Florida. That's a really big football hotspot for a lot of guys. Uh, He ended up being a three-star recruit out of the 2020 uh, cycle ranked as the 19th best wide receiver and 44th best uh, Florida prospect, according to 47 Sports. Uh, ESPN had him actually ranked as a five-star recruit, which was interesting. Uh, So Dale's journey began uh, during the 2020 cycle when he entered the transfer portal. 
Uh, he committed to Florida International before ultimately attending Alabama A&M 2018. Uh, after four games with Alabama A&M, he ended up redshirting. Uh, he ended up committing back to Florida International. Uh, never actually even attended that school and instead transferred to Independence Community College. So he moved around quite a bit during 2019. He eventually landed at Houston for his final three years of college football. Uh, he's explosive. He's exceptional burst. Uh, makes him a really dangerous deep threat. He's smart. He's nuanced. He's got that that little route running swag to him. He's able to create separation from the defenders. Uh, he sinks his hips, foot speed, stopping ability at all. All is on display for you. Uh, and he's got a really, really quick change of direction to get open. Uh, he's also super consistent at extending his body and his frame to secure in passes, uh, along with that lateral twitch and that foot speed. He's just a really reliable target for quarterbacks. Uh, his versatility as a receiver is also a strength. While he primarily plays slot, he's lined up on the outside in the backfield and he goes out in motion. So he lines up all over for Houston. It uh, allows them to have free access releases at the snap, making it really difficult for defenders to um, predict his route. When lined up outsider in the slot, he uses his speed and rapid foot fire to win against press coverage. Uh, his quickness and ability to make defenders miss in tight spaces is he's just a really slippery run after the catch target. Uh, he also profiles as a really quick accelerator and has the speed to outrun defenders and defeat pursuit angles. With his exceptional ball tracking ability and deep passes, uh, he can make some really high difficult catches just look routine. He's got that combination of explosiveness, route running, and that versatility makes him a really valuable os uh, os asset to offenses. Now, one of the biggest concerns that you're going to see, though, um, he ended up leading all of the NCAA in total receiving yardage last year, but he's tiny, 5'8", 165 pounds. I'm bigger than this guy, literally. I'm not big, but, like, I weigh more than this guy, and I'm a full inch taller than he is, uh, which makes me really feel bad about my overall athleticism because this guy is super <laughs> dynamic, super fast, but he is scrawny, he is tiny. Guys at his side, they just don't excel in the NFL. It's very rare that you find guys that are this light, this tall. Even though he led the entire NCAA in total yardage, uh, and he was really dynamic, really fun to watch, it's kind of scary to go and put some stock in a guy like this. But even so, uh, he ended up being the Reese's Senior Bowl uh, practice player of the week for the North or South team. I don't remember which team he was on. Uh, so he's on people's radar. Uh, I think that there's enough there to make him draftable. Um, but it, like I said, it's a really, really big shot in the dark because while he's got some some ability to him, I mean, it takes one hit and this dude's going to get rocked. Like he's going to have a whole outline on the ground because he's just so light. Like you just don't see guys this light, uh, this small, really succeed at that position. So. Um, that's my biggest knock on him, but he's a really fun, exciting player. So we'll see where it, where it goes. All right, moving down my list. Um, I'm going to talk about Xavier Hutchinson, the wideout out of Iowa State. And this dude is a smooth operator. Um, watching him in, in, in the gauntlet drill, he just absolutely just strides through the catch. He's a very instinctual catcher of the football, and he just makes it look so natural. Um, I, I think just looking at that drill alone, you're going to be able to see that he's going to easily be able to corral the short passes, uh, short passes over the middle of the field. Um, and he does that while maintaining his speed, if not building uh, towards the next level. Um, he has the ability also to go get up there on high passes that might not be accurate. Um, he has that extension, uh, can make those catches outside of his frame. Um and wasn't a super highly recruited uh, prospect. He, he's a redshirt senior, so has a lot of um, – has, has been playing college football for a while now. Um, he had to go the JUCO route, and, and eventually that got him into the Big 12. Um, and he's led the Big 12 in, in catches the, the last three seasons. This guy is a, a possession receiver. Um, in 2022, 107 receptions led the conference was eighth in the nation in receiving yards with 1,171 yards. 
um, and finished his his uh, NCAA career with almost 3,000 yards. So very productive. Um, and it doesn't matter where you play him. Uh, he, he can move around. He took 30% of his snaps from the slot. Most of them, 70%, were on the outside. Um, so it allows offensive coordinators uh, to find those mismatches at 6'2". You can't really guard him with a smaller DB with a, a, a 4 5 40. He's going to run around um, linebackers or, or safeties if once he is in that slot uh, position. So win with speed, wins with quickness, can win with strength. Um, very, very strong at 203 pounds um, and really good body control. He, he, he knows how to use his body for his good. Uh, he can run through press. Um, also, does very well of fighting through inside shade, gets that good body positioning on those in breaking routes. Um, he's going to be very, very good just on just letting him run slants at the NFL. Um, in the deep part of the field, he, he's really, really good at tracking the ball when it gets in the air. He has a really good sense of just being in the right place at the right time. Um, has the acrobatic ability to contort his body to make some plays that you don't think he has a, a, a chance Um uh, can make those spectacular catches because of it and, and just cruises under bombs. Uh, he could, he, he's just always in the right place. It seems I think he has magnets in his hands because the ball just zooms out of the air and, and goes right into his hands almost every time uh, can make those contested catches because this guy is strong. Once his hands clamp down, uh, it's like a vice grip. You're not getting that ball um, out of there very easily. Great focus and coordination and, um, I've seen him get to some some deflected balls over uh, that that he had no business getting to, which I think might be interesting when you pair him up with Justin Herbert, who, despite at six six, constantly has his uh, passes batted down at the line of scrimmage. So uh, Hutch, I, I think, has those hands to convert in the the difficult catch situations when you need exceptional hand eye coordination. Um, he's not a guy I I doubt to you know be able to get the the two feet in bounds. I, I think he's going to be able to naturally move from the one step in, or the one foot in college to the two step, uh, just the little toe taps there on the, on the sideline. Um, and he's always looking for extra yardage too. He, he could spin out of tackles. I seen him lower his pads and drive through smaller guys. He's a decent runner in space. Um, he has enough agility to break some would be arm tackles. Uh, but, but that's about it. Um, he's, he's not going to juke you out of your shoes or anything like that. Um, and he's not an elite athlete. Um, he has some solid agility. He has solid foot speed, but it's not something that you're going to just be wow about. Um, and I think that's his biggest concern is his, his, will he be able to constantly create separation downfield with that speed? I don't think he's much of a, a vertical threat. Um, great release, very disciplined with how he stacks DBs and, and, and makes those plays. Um, but he's not going to run away from you. Um, he meant the way he wins. He, he, he wins with smarts. He wins with savvy. He, he's all swagger over the elite athleticism. Um, to me, he looks like a slimmer, sh uh, slightly shorter Michael Thomas, um, a guy who's going to feast on the slants. He's a chain mover, an a, a great possession receiver, um, a guy who is going to lead your league or lead your team in, in first downs. Um, now I, I do think he needs to become a little more disciplined with his route running technique. Um, he needs to stop running so uptight and, and learn to sink those hips to be able to explode in and out of breaks. Um, but I, I think if you see him in the third round, that's a pretty safe pick. Uh, I could see teams absolutely falling in love, um, with that type of production. If they don't have a, a Keenan Allen or a Michael Thomas type of pro uh, guy, uh, I could see him sneaking into the late second round, but to me, third round is, is kind of the sweet spot for Xavier Hutchinson. Uh, you didn't uh, pick Trey Palmer, did you? No. All right, because I'm, I'm switching up. I like Dontavian Wicks. I was going to talk about Dontavian Wicks, but for this last one, I, I really kind of want to talk about Trey Palmer because he's somebody that's kind of grown on me a little bit. So he was a four-star recruit with 30 total offers out of high school, and this guy is a track star. So he won the state title in the 100 meter and the 200 meter. Uh, and he ended up setting state record in 200 times. So this guy, he's a track star. Uh, and he's also earned back-to-back all-state honors as a junior senior. Uh, he helped his team win the state title in 2018 that year. 
he had stats that would make uh, create the player mad in on uh, create a player mad and proud. So three of three passing for 95 yards, two touchdowns. He had 31 carries for 275 yards, and he had three touchdowns there, and then 39 catches for 1,008 yards. So and nine touchdowns. So he had like that's just insane stats for a single year of high school football, nearly 400 total return yards, 95 tackles on defense, eight tackles for a loss. I mean, in high school, this guy did everything, which is really, he turns out to be really beneficial throughout a football player's career because they just have so much knowledge of so many different positions. And it really usually helps you out quite a bit. Uh, so he ended up settling in. I goes to college at LSU after three seasons, only has 41 receptions for 458 yards, three touchdowns. I mean, if you think about LSU, LSU wide receiver core has been stacked for years. You're talking about Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Kayon Boot. Um, they, I mean, the whole that whole wide receiver room at LSU just got really crowded. It ended up forcing him to transfer. Uh, and then he ended up starting every single t uh, game for Nebraska uh, since he left. Um, he was the team's leading wide receiver and kick returner, punt returner. Uh, his game is really just based off of his athleticism and that track speed, like I said. Uh, he's a legitimate vertical threat who can just take the top off the, off, uh, the defense. And his initial burst is really, really impressive. He's also fluid in the open field, accelerating, decelerating with ease, and frees defenders before blowing past them. Um, he can vary his strides as a route runner. He lulls defenses to sleep before he ends up torching them. Uh, he also has a really special talent for manipulating and setting up defenders with his upper body. Um, he's, what is he, six foot, 192 pounds. So he's got decent size to him, uh, 9.6 inch hands, uh, 30, almost 32 inch arms. So he's got some length to him as well. Uh, he's a really, really good football player and a guy that you really just want to just blow past defenders because that's what he's he's good at. His 40-yard dash, 4.33, I think that was like the second fastest or third fastest at the entire combine. Uh, I just I, I think he's a really special player. Nebraska's offense uh, does not require many hard breaks from their wideouts, but he's flashed the ability to snap down and at the top of the route. Uh, he also keeps his legs uh, moving underneath his frames for balance and efficiency out of his breaks. Um, I mean, like I said, that strong combine is probably going to improve his draft stock. Uh, he was being looked at as kind of a, a fifth, fourth round draft back pick, but I think a team's going to, they always do every year. They fall in love with speed. I see this guy going in the third round. It'd be really annoying to have two Palmers at the wide receiver position, mm -hmm. three and four. But like I said, like having that speed to take the top off, I mean, it goes a long way. And if you can develop his the skill sets that are already there and you already know he's got that pedigree. He's got that training from LSU. Um, he could be a really, really special player. So. All right. Um, I'm moving on to my final receiver and this guy is really, I think my, my sleeper pick from the position. And I, I like, I really like Tyler Scott, the slot uh, receiver out of Cincinnati uh, 5'10", 177 pounds, and and I think I saw, I think it was in the combine. Um, they're talking about this guy is going to be the next T.Y. Hilton, and I I, I kind of see it. They're just a very a very very fast guy was a junior Olympic sprinter um, during high school. Brings you that top end speed that you're looking for. Um, and he only ran a four four forty, but he gets up to that top speed very very fast. He's a fluid runner, uh, very natural. Uh, explosive off the line, and that's going to make him a threat to constantly pull away from defenders. And he may be small, um, but he has a surprisingly long stride. I think that it, it, what leads to him being able to get to that top speed so quickly. He just eats up space. He attacks space. Um, he's going to make a, a, an undisciplined DB at the next level um, worried of that speed, of, of getting beat deep over to the top because he he brings that potential um he doesn't have any type of problem getting open uh downfield he, he has great pace the ability to oh no what's what is this is that tyler scott why can't i hear you oh you're muted 
keep going. I thought I'd try this out uh, and try to play it. Oh, talk sweet. about that. I love it. It's got it a little bit more. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I like this guy. Uh, can beat you with just straight line speed, but I really like his ability to switch up the gears. He's not always in fifth, sixth gear. He knows how to manipulate that with the slow little stutter step and then gets you uh, when he does decide to turn it on. Has, has the subtle fakes, the false steps. Um, I think he's a pretty interesting route runner, when he, even when he's just running straight. Um I mentioned that he's small, but he has a really good ability to go get high and high point the balls. That's perfect timing. He has a 39 yeah, right. and a half, right? 39 and a half inch vertical uh, tied for the fifth best at the position, just snatches the ball out of the air. Um, very natural flow from the catch into running and adding up those, those yak yards. Um, only two years of starting experience. You know, some think that, it may have been a little early for him to declare after just his junior year. Um, but if his route running, his ball skills continue to improve like they have over the last three years, I, I think he's going to be extremely productive in the NFL. Um, he, he He's still learning, which I think is the, the, the important thing here. He's still learning. He's still learning to put it all together. Um, he does tip his routes a little bit. Um, but I, I, I do think he's going to be a great addition for a team like the Chargers looking to add a, a run after the catch threat. Um, I do think he also brings a, some solid versatility to the position because of his skill set. Uh, he's very shifty. That's going to make him lethal when the ball is in his hands. The potential for Jep Sweets is there. Um, only had one rushing attempt in college, uh, but he did take it 20 yards. So I, I think he could do that uh, consistently if given the opportunity. Um I think he'll be a weapon in the screen game. Um, he played running back in high school. So you, you want to get the ball into this guy's hands because he's going to make some play. He's going to make some plays for you. And I, I think he has some punt return potential uh, because of how dynamic he is. Uh, that wasn't really used at the collegiate level. Uh, but for somebody, you know, looking to re replace the DeAndre Carter type, um, I think Tyler Scott would be a good fit there. Great energy, the Im impressive foot speed. Very, very good agility in the short area, um, and he's a playmaker. He, he he had 14 career touchdowns. Ten of those went for 30 yards or more. Um, I, I get that he's smaller in stature. He's not a guy who's going to outmuscle you. Uh, he's he's not the best in contested such uh, contested catch situations. Um, he's he's deal dealt with drops in, in the past. Um, you have to kind of worry about the, the how he will be able to withstand uh, the physicality of the the nfl um but his explosiveness i think is more than enough to overlook all of those concerns uh, i think he will be a good fit for our team um now because of his limitations he's probably not a guy who's going to be your number one uh, but i think he has fantastic potential as your number two and for a guy like the the or for a team like the chargers who really only need him to be their number three or four depending on uh, game plan. Uh, I think it would be a great ad. I, I love his skill set. Uh, he brings you that vertical speed. He's a, he's great with the ball in his hands. I, I think he'd be a tremendous value um, looking there. Probably a, a third round selection in my opinion. I gotta know who's your who's your favorite. Uh, and I'm showing you right now, Jordan Addison. Who's your favorite wide receiver in this draft? Who's that? Who's that guy? You know, 21. All those wide receivers are on the board. It won't happen, but let's just pretend. And All who's that guy that you're really wanting? Well, now that's the thing. Um, for the Chargers or just period? Both. It, well, so I think, to me, the, the best guy, the the the, bet, the most productive guy day one, week one, um, is going to be Quentin Johnston. To me, I think the best fit early is, is Jalen Hyatt. Um, but out of all the 10 guys that we talked about, I would be ecstatic with any of them joining the, the Chargers just because we need we need some more playmakers. Um, and I think there's for, for what the Chargers are looking for, speed and uh, uh, a, a yak specialist. I, I think there's plenty of guys. I, I think it's just kind of going to be preference and, and what exactly Tom Telesco and, and company um, value. But I, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't be upset with any of these guys. But if I had to put the hierarchy on it. Quinston Johnson is to me the best, most well-rounded guy. And then Hyatt, I think just makes too much sense for what exactly the, the chargers are looking for um, as far as fit and scheme.
I just think it'd be so weird to get another Quentin Johnson because you've already got Mike Williams, who's that big guy. Uh, yeah. Josh Palmer plays like a big guy. Uh, I mean, I'd want to, I miss having like a small, like a Josh Downs, like a small guy who's just a burner who can a uh, really, really good route runner, but route runner for speed, not for spatial awareness like Keenan Allen is. So I would love to see a guy like this, like a Ooh. Zay Flowers that I might pop up here. But we have a, a time for one more um, as I'm starting to get better and learning how to do this at, on the fly. I It'd like be kind of cool to do this the rest of the draft. I'll let you know if I'm able to do it. Also, I don't want to get in trouble for any um, somebody else's video, but like I, I just, I don't know, highlight videos are always fun. Yeah. Uh, any closing remarks, Zach? Um, we're in it. it free agency is going to start. We're going to get some some pretty solid. Um, we're going to get a really good, clear picture of how this offseason is going to, to run, um, is, is going to operate for the Chargers here soon. There, there's so much going to happen in the next week, month, leading up into the draft, and I, I'm just very excited to see how it all plays out. Yeah. Well, anyways, uh, I think we're out of time. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, we will be bringing up something hopefully this week and talking a little bit about free agency. Uh, Monday, you're going to start seeing teams really attacking hard. Uh, and, and by Wednesday, free agency is fully open. So Chargers are I still have a couple restructures left in them. There's going to be some surprise cuts coming. Um, this is a fun time for football right now uh, because, you know, Three weeks, four weeks after free agency period, you run into the actual draft. We'll be breaking down uh, some offensive line, some defensive line. We got DBs to talk about. Oh, yeah. I wish it would have been a little bit better at this little sharing my video thing earlier. But thank you guys so much for listening. And we will talk to you guys later. Over and out.